So Morphe have certainly had their ups and downs, mostly downs, <laughs> including shutting down the majority of their stores and treating their staff members appallingly and it seemed like they were actually having a bit of an identity crisis at one point but listen are Morphe slowly clawing their way back into mainstream beauty media social media I should say before we get into today's video do please go ahead and consider subscribing give this video a thumbs up leave a comment saying Morphe is back even if you don't believe it <laughs> Maybe don't. And subscribe to my reaction channel if you haven't already. So this isn't going to be like a deep dive into Morphe. I actually did a video on Morphe a while back. I'll leave it up here and I'll leave it linked down below for you as well. But in my mind, and I think for a lot of us, Morphe was pretty much over. Like bankrupt, done, made no money, nowhere else to go. They were shutting down. Where do we go from here? Done. If you're a makeup artist, then you need to know this alarming piece of information because it concerns you. You might not know this, especially if you're in Australia, but early in January, Morphe Makeup closed all of their stores in the US and became bankrupt. This happened after they were sued for using proven dangerous and unapproved ingredients in their makeup. As a side effect, customers were affected with skin irritations, allergies, and allergic reactions. Morphe's parent company, known as Forma Brands, has filed for bankruptcy back on January 12th, a week after the makeup brand announced on social media that it would be closing all of its stores in the U.S. The reason why they decided to file bankruptcy is largely due to the lack of revenue growth in spite of their marketing deals with YouTubers and influencers. These influencers are now among the company's largest unsecured creditors. So they owe James Charles $2.8 million, oh, yikes. Jaclyn Hill $2 million, and Jeffree Star $1.4 million dollars in claims new documents from the morphe like bankruptcy have come out yeah so the company that acquired them which i think is called like jeffrey's inc or something like that no affiliation to jeffrey star they really yeah like Genuinely? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. So they have pushed back on the licensing agreement that Morphe had, or former whoever, had with Jaclyn Cosmetics. And so she gets 15% of whatever Jaclyn Cosmetics makes. Now, Jeffries, the like company that's bought them, is pushing back and saying, like, that's too much. We're not going to accept that. We'll probably never know what it ends up being because that won't be made public. Like, it's only public because yes. they're in like the middle of this court thing. Yes. But yeah, so interesting. Oh my God, that is, that is so interesting. Mm -hmm. They closed all their stores. They owed people loads of money. Nothing seemed like it was going well for this brand. And it seemed like they couldn't really fix anything. But recently I saw something on social media that I haven't seen for a very, very long time. Someone saying they liked a Morphe product and they were excited about it. Yeah. Now let me start off by saying this, I've been put off Morphe entirely. I will never use that brand again. I just personally, I don't like the way they treated their staff when they shut a, a lot of their stores and gave their staff members like a week's notice or a day's notice or whatever it was. I just think it was appalling. I think it's a really terrible way to treat people just because your business is going out of business. And did you know, did you know Morphe too was still around? I saw it the other day and I was like, didn't, didn't you die that weird sister brand to morphe that kind of made no sense they're like oh it's for gen z I, it's still around you might be thinking why are you saying this why are you say why are you bringing morphe back up why are you saying this <laughs> haven't we all lost interest after the drama the collabs with influencers are only preteens like what makes me think morphe is having like a comeback moment right and there's a few things there's a few different things well it all started in my mind with these eyeshadow palettes right the rich and foiled eyeshadow palettes. Let me show you these. Morphe says, discover a wealth of possibilities. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> They're just monochromatic palettes. With Morphe rich and foiled eyeshadow palettes, inspired by the unstoppable allure of precious metals, these excessive and expressive nine pan curations elevate eye artistry with luxe mattes, shimmers and metallics, plus a crown jewel. That one right in the middle. People were like, I know this is Morphe, but this, this kind of looks good. So I know like a year ago, Morphe was like going bankrupt and getting rid of all their stores because their eyeshadow palettes caused like a massive like lawsuit because they're pressed pigments, but they were marketed as eyeshadows. So honestly, I thought they were going down under. Morphe, I've never hated you. If there's one Morphe fan, it's me. They're like the best affordable eyeshadow palettes with very pretty colors that are accessible and on the market. And as a young, poor creative growing up, Morphe was what I had. 
So lately, their launches have been nothing to write home about, especially those uh, luminous foundations where the second lightest shade is peach. So expand that, please. I would love to wear it. But when I saw they came out with these, I was shook. Look at how insane the silver in the middle is. And it has that indent in it because I mixed it with setting spray to make a silver eyeliner. So here is a wet swatch for you guys. Uh, girl, look at that. We need to bring metallic liners back on the market. But guys, look at that. That is absolutely stunning. As somebody who used them a long time ago when they were in the big black plastic packaging, it was like the 35 pans and everyone loved them. I love that formula. I am doing a tutorial today using the Morphe 350M and 350S palettes. I'm using this orange tone right through the socket, just pushing that in and blending it through. This color, I wish you could see it on camera, but it's kind of this fleshy, almost like peachy color, but it actually has a duo tone to it. So it has this amazing pink kind of luster tone as well. I'm using this burnt orange, this amazing, amazing color. It's so vivid. I felt like it needed a little bit more color. So I'm just taking that through the socket along my um, socket bone. I'm blending that through. This brush is incredible. It's, I can't remember the number, I'll put it on the screen. It's this really huge blending brush and it just makes the job so much easier and quicker. These palettes are incredible. If you haven't tried Morphe before, which who hasn't by now, um, I would definitely recommend them. Thank you so much for joining me guys. I will see you next week. Bye. And then as someone who also experienced the change in the formula and how terrible they really got, um, I have to say I was surprised. Seeing people talk positively about a Morphe eyeshadow formula was confusing, right? And looking looking at the palettes, they do look nice. They look good. They look like nice palettes. So I was like, okay, Morphe had a moment, a little fluke moment, right? Then came the foundation that people were talking a lot about. The Light Form Extended Hydration Foundation. Bring your best skin to light. This weightless, long-wearing formulation floats on to diffuse imperfections instantly with undetectable buildable medium coverage, while Hydro Relief Complex works to improve and maintain skin's moisture balance and barrier function over time. This comes in 36 shades. To be fair, the shade range does look pretty good, which is a relief considering we've had some pretty bad shade ranges recently. And even the lipstick lesbians were like, look, look, this is good, this is good shit. Very strange. Did you see that? Where are the lipstick lesbians when you need them? Here, standing in front of Morphe. We have a new mission. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela. Light form, let's talk about her. Look at that. I have shade Tan 22. This is obviously not my shade, but remember this is about texture. This is one of the smoothest gliding foundations I've touched in a long time. How this is laying down is really unique. It is giving a nice play time. Now I put one pump on and I'm getting That's a, a really nice level of coverage. When I say the spread is nice, I mean you're getting coverage as this lays down and it's really easy to lay down. When you add friction like Michaela applying the sponge, you'll notice it will be lighter. Sometimes the way that pigments disperse in a formula base impacts how they interact with friction. So this treated pigment is just lightening the bulk on contact. It is not gonna be impacted once it dries down. So this is something I've seen with treated pigments, which means they have an encapsulation around them. And that also sometimes helps with the glide and the texture. Why does this feel like a lubricant? Why is this gliding so seamlessly? Let's talk about the ingredients. Second ingredient, silicone, diamethicone, definitely gonna contribute to the glide. But this, isoamyl laurate, that is interesting. I have not really seen that ingredient, which is the third ingredient, in a lot of foundations. This is an ester. Esters have the ability to feel non-oily, but be extremely hydrating. Talk about a lubricant. That's why we're talking about this extended hydration element. We're using this ingredient, the isoamyl laurate, to drive emolliency without the oily feeling, with it being so thin and so spreadable. And they're basically sandwiching that ester with a bunch of silicones and film formers around it. Wow, that's wild. All of this hydration story, this moisture, without the oily after effect. Super, super thin, super, super lightweight. Way for all skin types, even if you're oily. It's still gonna give us that sheen and performance because it's sandwiched with film formers and silicone. So how about the idea that the Morphe's a dupe for the NARS? For my light reflecting? Yeah. No, don't get it twisted. Let's get into it. Next video. Next video. And they don't mess around. They look at things and they're like, this is why it's good. This is why this works. This is why this happens. No bullshit, you know? But that was also getting 
amazing reviews. People loved Foundation. Morphe did a Foundation before that I think was pretty shit. Like, I don't think people enjoyed it that much. I think they tried to delve into complexion. Remember they used to, used to do the concealer palettes? They looked really cheap, like AliExpress drop shit palettes. Like you can find them anywhere. I definitely owned a few. Okay, but then the blush happened, right? And this, I think this is more of a visually exciting thing. But then again, people have been really excited about trying this product. Not even try it, physically trying it, they've been excited ab ab about the aspect, the prospect, the, the potential of trying this product. I actually haven't seen anyone use it. I probably will after this watch people use it. But people were getting it in PR and being really excited because it looks really different, right? So this blush, it's called the Euphoric Rush 3-in-1 Silk Blush. Experience the rush. This buildable, buttery smooth blush primes, hydrates, and blurs for a healthy looking flush and supple matte finish. Swirled with silky skin perfecting primer and infused with hyaluronic filling spheres, vegetable collagen, and bamboo extract, this lush formula glides and melts in for a naturally diffused effect that lasts and hydrates all day. That sounds like it's gonna slip off my skin. It sounds slippery, silicone-y, and horrible. And people have had mixed reviews on it, to be honest. I personally don't like blushes with primers in. I haven't used one that I like yet. I, I just don't like the, the way it sits on the skin. Blush just needs to be blush. So I even asked you all over on Instagram, right? I said, does anyone use Morphe anymore? Is anyone interested in Morphe? You had things to say over there, <laughs> including who? <laughs> Not even slightly. I only see that aerial brush set that people bought and use. Oh yeah. Someone said, I just want to know what terrible thing they've done now. <laughs> no, I have zero interest in them. Very uninterested in anything Morphe. Low-key want them to just call it. Is that bad? No, I thought that's what was happening. No, because they're bad people. And then just like a whole load of no's and nopes and no. This was very telling, right? There aren't actually that many people who aren't like influencers or content creators who have been using this blush or these products and been interested in them. So is it the case of that kind of roll on effect that tends to happen on TikTok of, for example, of me saying, oh my gosh, I love this viral lipstick palette. Everyone loves it. It's really, really viral. And then some other content creators being like, oh shit, I need to try it and say I love it so I can sell it and say it's really viral. And then it has that knock on effect of people buying the one product because it went viral, like mascara gate. Everyone bought that mascara, right? And are Morphe just making products now that are kind of more visually appealing? Because that's what we look at. We look at something that's really visual visual, our attention needs to be grabbed within like one second or whatever it is now, a blush with that spiraling and has a clear spiral in it is going to be quite attention grabbing. Is Morphe using this to kind of get back in the minds of people? Are they doing this to kind of be like, oh, remember us? Do they want a bit more excitement around their brand? Because it doesn't really happen anymore, let's be real. Morphe are kind of like, off everyone's list. Again, I'm personally not gonna buy from Morphe ever again, ever. I just don't like the brand at all, the way it's gone. The products as, as well have gone downhill, but also just that horribleness that happened, that awful situation that happened with their staff members, I just think was awful. Are you interested in the brand? No judgment. Are you interested from seeing some of these products? Would you go ahead and buy those products? Let me know down below. Let me know your opinion on Morphe. I, I think it's more what I want to know. Thanks again for joining me. Do consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.